Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Flying Reporter. Today I'm on the Slovenian-Italian border and I'm going to be flying in the world's first ever certified electric aircraft. Is this the game changer? The two-seater all-electric Velis Electro from Pipistrel. The first in the race to bring electric flying into mainstream aviation. As well as taking a trial flight in this pioneering training aircraft, I'll be looking behind the scenes at its production facility, talking to the aircraft's chief designer. It's essentially establishing electric flight as, as normality. And meeting the founder of the company that made it. It's a duty of everybody who can contribute to a clean atmosphere to do it. Okay, before start of check, please, doors will be checked, controls free. I'm going on a flight like no other I've experienced. One of Pipistrol's test pilots, Dennis, is taking me for a short run in the company's latest machine, the Velis Electro. Just like any piston or jet engine aircraft, there's a pre-start checklist. And now we have a battery. We are coming from ready to active state. And then the power on. So on FC both active, trim, set, neutral, parking brake, released. And power. It sounds futuristic, it's quiet, and there are no fumes. But apart from the fact that this is powered by electricity, not avgas or kerosene, it's just another aeroplane. So taxiing is conventional with the rudder pedals, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just the rudder pedals, and uh, usually it takes uh, four to five kilowatts for taxiing on the grass. So power is measured in kilowatts? Yes. And takeoff power is full throttle, is it? Or? Full throttle, yeah. And then what do you set for cruise? For cruise is around uh, 25 to 30 kilowatts. Okay. We'll have around 90 knots. Okay. Do you do a sort of power check before takeoff? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like you would normally? Well, uh, on this aircraft you just need four switches and you're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> no warm up, nothing needed. Yeah. So four switches and you're ready to go. This isn't the first electric aeroplane in the world for sure, but it's the first certified electric aeroplane, which means it can now be used for training, for hire and aerial work. According to the company's founder, one of the key benefits of this model is its operating costs, a fraction of what it would cost to operate and maintain a legacy piston model including the depreciation, uh, changing the batteries, uh, overhauls everything, uh, uh, and uh, uh, energy, comparing to fuel, uh, the operation cost of the aircraft uh, is uh, uh, about 60% uh, lower than uh, comparable Pipistrel aircraft, uh, fuel powered, which is already very, very, let's say, efficient and very affordable, but comparing to, let's say, uh, old type of, of uh, uh, classic type of uh, designed aircraft like Cessna 150 or 152, uh, it's about uh, uh, yeah 80 percent of different of the cost. Most of that saving comes from the fact you're not using Avgas. At today's prices, to recharge the Velis Electro for one hour's flight costs somewhere around three to five pounds. Even with Avgas prices quite cheap right now, an hour's worth of fuel for say a Cessna 152 might cost somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 pounds. That's 10 times more. So where does it, this is, this is your battery uh, yeah. status, yeah? That is state of charge, yeah. yeah. And this is your endurance, is it? Yeah, yeah, endurance uh, depends how power, how much power do you apply. Of course. And it will change. But uh, usually flying this one, the block time is over one hour, yeah. of course, but uh, the, on the, yeah. the flight time around 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Yeah. Depends what what, what of flying you're doing. And it's an electric trim. Yeah, it's electric trim. Yeah. And the great thing about it is when you stop, you're not using barely any power at all, any, any energy. Yeah, no power at all. The yeah. power also stops. I'll just check now the power. 
with the system menu, so both batteries must be active. Yeah. I'll just, we'll just do it. 55, more than 55, that's okay. And back to idle. The Velis is a step up from the company's Alpha Electro two-seater trainer. The Alpha is not a certified aircraft and sits in the special or experimental category. The company's chief technical officer runs me through the Velis's specifications. So the aircraft is a 600 uh, kilo aeroplane uh, because it comes from its uh, sister's design, the Virus SW121, which is a Rotax powered uh, standard category TC aeroplane. And uh, yes, we did re-engine it, but we also made it uh, much more lightweight on the airframe to be able to accept a large battery. It's a single engine aircraft. The engine is also type certified. It's mounted in the front, just like you'd expect from a trainer aeroplane. Um, about 80 horsepower equivalent. However, the 80 horsepower arrive instantly, thanks to the electric drive, and all the time. There is no hot and high for this aircraft. So you basically operate at nominal powers uh, always. And uh, the battery is organized in two battery packs, one in front of the cabin and one behind. And all of the powertrain components, including the batteries, are now liquid cooled. So this is the, let's say, technological step up from the Alpha Electro. Liquid cooling means that the aircraft is more robust in operation, it can fly in the cold. That's one thing. And the longevity of the components in a, is another thing. So liquid cooling, what it does amongst other things is that the, the temperature distribution uh, inside the component is uniform. Yeah? So there's no heat pockets or hot zones, nothing like that. So it means that also aging is uniform and uh, you are able to achieve about double component life than what we could do before um, in the Alpha Electro. Very clear, pp one Lining up and take off from the uh, 09 Okay, let's go. Airspeed alive. Could it just be the queen? Yeah, proceeding for left downwind zero nine for touch and go. And then at uh, safe altitude, we go to. 48, 49 kilowatts, that is maximum continuous power. And flaps zero. Then we climb with 70. There was nothing about that takeoff that seemed vastly different from any other light aircraft takeoff I've experienced. And that's because the Velis Electro has been specifically designed so that from the cockpit you operate it pretty much as you would any other certified aeroplane. It means you can transition from another type to electric or vice versa with just an hour or so of differences training. The beauty of the electric motor is how quiet it is. So the only noise is just the noise from the propeller? Yeah. Yeah, you, you still need a headset. Yeah, for, um, for just for a uh, climb and full power. The model is particularly attractive to flying schools and clubs based in noise sensitive towns and cities. Where do you see your market for this aircraft? Well, I can tell you that only in Europe uh, there are more than 100 airports which are closed uh, during the weekend for training. In Switzerland, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, France, uh, also Germany because of noise you cannot fly or you cannot do a training during the weekend only during the week and who has who has time to 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 go to learn to fly during the week nobody because we are working so we are bringing back the flight and the training to urban areas uh, where uh, because of noise now the classic training is not it's not allowed but and it's a big but battery capacity and its weight is the big constraint at the moment. You have an endurance of just 50 minutes plus 10 minutes reserve on the Velis Electro, but the company thinks that's enough for now. Just give me the facts about the endurance, yeah. um, because that's what everyone wants to know, isn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, it probably drives you mad because that's what everyone always asks yeah. you. Well, we actually selected a certain kind of an endurance, right? There is the technological boundary. So yes, we could have gone for some 
super state-of-the-art batteries that may not be even certifiable and spend a decade showing that they are safe and proven and, and actually do not cause any adverse any adverse effects uh, during crash as well uh, or we decided to to essentially set up the endurance to be between 45 and 55 minutes. Uh, PPSR operates an in-house flight school with actual students. So we went through, through all of the activity and we've identified that uh, 45 to 55 minutes is more than adequate. What one needs to know about electric flight is that when you say minutes, it's actual minutes in high power operation. You know, taxi pretty much burns nothing. Waiting on the, air, on the airfield for some traffic to pass burns nothing. So these are not minutes we are talking about. And effectively, if you are comparing to, to some other gasoline-powered aircraft and, and let's say a, a reasonably busy small airport where you are not the only one that flies, it translates to pretty much one hour of activity. So we've leveled off at 2,000 feet and we've got 85% uh, battery power in the bank. And we're at cruise speed now at just over 80 knots, 27 kilowatts. And it's saying here we've got 36 minutes. And that's still depletion? Uh, it's still a summer reserve. A bit of reserve in there. Yeah. You might be familiar with the EASA regulations around needing to have a 30-minute reserve for VFR flight and 45 minutes for IFR, but in the case of a flight that takes off and lands at the same aerodrome and keeps that aerodrome in sight, the stipulated reserve is just 10 minutes. Oh, if you want, you can try it. I'd love to. So the, the, the ride so far, until I took control, was very smooth. And... Uh, is it okay to try some turning? Yeah, sure. Um, turn to the right. Doesn't matter. Left, right. Okay. It uh, flies very conventionally. Yeah. Yeah. It's for for a very light aircraft. It's very um, it's very comfortable. Ah, and it's quite sta it's stable. Really stable. It is really also in the turn. So compared to sort of other sort of lighter aircraft I've flown in, it's, it's very, very comfortable. Yeah. Given that we've probably got a fair bit of turbulence off the mountains. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the heat off the ground and stuff. Very nice. It has a three blade fixed propeller, pitch, 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 fixed pitch propeller, but it has a limitator in, so we cannot go over RPMs. Okay. Even if you push it all the way up, a lot of the PPL syllabus can be covered in the Velis Electro and unlike your average legacy training aircraft, as well as a stall alarm, it has a stick shaker too. Backing up power. Now we're at idle. We have zero kilowatts. I'll just pull it all the way back. And slowly all the way back. Oh yeah, there is a stick shaker. That's awesome. That is the flight control. <laughs> and it's stalling fairly benignly here. Yeah. We now got a fairly significant drop going. That's also when we recover. Awesome. We lost barely any height there. Yeah. That's really good. Pipistrel says it's currently producing four Velis aircraft a month and will have delivered 39 by the end of 2020. Next year they'll be upping production to six Velis Electros a month. This flying club near Gothenburg in Sweden has just acquired one. In fact their former airport operator bought it for them with support from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency. Their maiden flight was just last week. They're confident the aircraft is built well enough to handle a bashing from student pilot landings, but the Swedish Transport Agency is currently not letting them fly with that 10-minute reserve at the moment, so lessons are currently limited to just 30 minutes while the authorities review the aircraft's actual performance. Why have you chosen to use this aircraft? We see this as a milestone of developing the future kind of aircraft that has batteries. And I think that now we have the first aircraft with an endurance of 32 minutes plus 30 minutes reserve. But I think that with 
with time and with future, we'll develop new batteries. And with new next generation batteries, we could actually gain more endurance. So I think if we can sh show the world that now we have one electric aircraft and it works, then we can keep on developing it. So, so that we can go longer and fly a longer time. So I see this as a beginning of something new actually. And I'm very proud that Sweden is now the second to take the Willis Electro and that we now in our club, Aero Club, Aero Klubben, has taken this huge step in Swedish development because we in Sweden, we talk a lot about the environment and we discuss environmental politics and such things. So it's a huge debate in Sweden talking about the environment and I see this as very positive. In addition to Sweden, Switzerland currently has three. Electric aeroplanes are being subsidised there by their government. They're trying to build a network of at least 10 aerodromes that have charges on site. The first Velis Electro in the UK is due to be delivered in October. Technology is moving fast. Pipistrel says it's currently working on hybrid hydrogen electric aircraft that can improve endurance and there are slow steady advances in battery capacity. Get, getting your crystal ball out then and looking ahead, how long do you think we will be before you can start perhaps doubling your endurance for example? Well, doubling the endurance is not a big challenge. I believe it will be ready in, in around three years. Uh, but then, uh, um, let's say, uh, going in, in, in longer range uh, uh, will be, uh, on the batteries, will be harder, I believe. But on the end, you know, you must know for what you need the aircraft. If you need the aircraft for cross-country, uh, in this moment, battery-powered aircraft is not the, the better choice. But if you, if you need the aircraft for training, then make no sense to carry with you uh, the batteries for three hours. Uh, flight because you need only one hour uh, uh, flight for, 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 for training, you know. I'm really quite impressed with the Velis Electro. I do wonder though if adoption rates will be slow while customers await the next leap in endurance. But hats off to the company for getting the first model certified. Not an easy task. They say the authorities have been afraid of electric propulsion. Big check, flaps one. We're not using any power now at all at nope. this moment in time, we're, uh, we're in a glide, so there's zero kilowatts. Okay, speed check, flaps two. My supporters club, subscribers and Patreon members can see some of the raw footage from this flight. Check out my website for details. Without them, I couldn't make this content. Good it just echo in the runway for Katie. Good. So I'd have to see how long we were flying for there. Um, oh, we've been flying 17, 17 18 minutes. minutes yeah. Yeah. And it's showing 65% uh, on the battery. After landing, it's a simple case of plugging the aeroplane into its charger. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on. Fly safely, my friends. that take to charge now? It takes the same time as we've been flying, so one by one. Right. One to one. Approximately one hour. That's a that's a hefty charger then I presume. Yeah. <laughs> well Dennis, thank you for the flight. Sure. You're welcome. That was really good. Really nice aircraft. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs>